Hello, so let's roll another video related to uh, generative AI and this specific video we're going to talk about at scaling using uh, Forge web user interface for stable diffusion. So we already did a video uh, about this interface, which is fantastic. Here you have the link. Now I strongly recommend it to install, to test it, to use it. And then you will make the decision if you want to transition or not. In my case, I still use an automatic 11.11. As you see, the interface is very similar. Um, actually, it's exactly the same as uh, automatic 11.11, but with a lot of optimization when it comes to memory usage and also uh, the <clears throat> generating the image. So here you have you no know, the description will really address that this, but I would like to revisit again here the performance improvement that you can get, and I have to say that you can get even more than that. In my personal experience, I can get up to 70% of improvement. I, <clears throat> I managed to test all since six gigs, no video ran, and I got this performance. And I managed to test test all since sixteen, which are very good, about twenty to thirty percent performance. So it's fantastic. Also, memory usage is amazing. So now I'm able to do things that I wasn't able to do in automatic eleven eleven or Comfy UI or Focus because all the time everything was going out of memory so here the out of memory management is much much better so in theory i think you can do uh very very large images so let's talk about upscaling and what we're going to do there is a lot to cover so here i have these slides and uh, first <clears throat> i would like to revisit another benchmarking so here we're comparing forge automatic 11 11 comfy ui and focus so we're using exactly same prompt as you can see i don't like to to use negative prompts or if i use one it will be just text watermark and the <coughs> in this non safe for words no acronym <coughs> but well we have it here we have all the generation details so I'm, I'm using this specific library and these parameters so there is a lot to talk about when it comes to uh to ox scaling but also generating you no know, normal images because checkpoints or models are extremely important so that will be another video also resolution is extremely important so you need to know the mobile that you are using so we know that excel usually is trained in 1024 or 24 and the stable diffusion 1.5 user of strain 512 but you cannot say that because there are some libraries of sd <clears throat> 1.5 that can do a thousand twenty four and there are some libraries sdxl that perform very well at lower resolution but you need to know that you need to know your <clears throat> your checkpoint okay i have to say that sd 1.5 is not dead okay i uh, i remember i started to do everything and i started to do it with xl but then i realized that 1.5 also performs really well there are some specific tasks and in particular <coughs> we're going to see that on scaling sometimes it give better re results so have it there as well so <coughs> So here what we have, okay, comparing Optima Comfy UI and Focus, and as you can see, always uh, Forge outperform all the other interface. Always when you, it's always the first time that you read the library, always it's a little bit slow, but then <clears throat> you start to redo images and everything is fine. So to mention that all this benchmarking was done using this uh, GPU, okay, so, and the memory management is amazing okay i have a, so far i have been doing this checking timing but also in checking the memory management and it's really good so this is the the benchmarking so <coughs> another this i uh, know another benchmarking just to move to to forge so i haven't done the the complete transition because there are some things that doesn't work uh some things that don't work in forge so i still i need to use automatic 11 11 hopefully one day everything will work, so I will do the complete transition. Talking about also you now models, resolution, and so on, prompts are very important. So here I'm showing you two, two images. I mentioned that I don't like to use negative prompts. The positive prompt is really, really strong in the generation. So it's better to fix everything here. We're already talking about this, but just to <clears throat> emphasize this. 
this issue and just to show you that here the image look at the difference here you have this sign and maybe some, some somewhere else there will be some slight difference but the only difference here was the period at the end and look at how the strong influence of this period at the end okay so be careful about that practice your prompts okay <coughs> models are important and resolution also have an influence no need to say that these parameters also but models are very important i talk about you no know, prompts and sometimes if you look at the, this image and you have here you know this flat and let's say that you don't want that flat and you will try to to correct this using negative pronoun that is incredibly difficult and look at that by just simply acting in the positive pronoun so putting here like german flat look at that i managed to to change that without any <coughs> adding any negative prone that can be very tricky to control and sometimes can have a very strong influence and will change your, your composition in, entirely. <coughs> it is true, by the way, that here would be better to use in painting, but just to show you prompts. So that being said, let's talk about upscaling because upscaling, now there are different techniques and we have model scaling, also known as AI scaling, and it's the scaling that I like to do. It's the scaling that I just want to increase <coughs> increase the resolution of the image, and then get no sharper images without changing the composition. And here, look at that. We have two images, okay, and original one, then scaling by a factor of four, okay, doing the scaling using the AI scaling so basically you cannot see anything there but here you have the link and let's see the image slider and this is what we have original image move the slider and then you have the upscale image which clearly you can see that you increase resolution but also you have <coughs> more sharpness no <coughs> And this is the kind of ox scaling I, I like to do. This is the one I do most of the time. But sometimes then I move to the next scaling that we're going to talk about. You can imagine that is latent space. So here we haven't modified the image. Okay, probably the scaler will add something. Now let me zoom in here. So look at that, what is happening here. You have kind of this pixelation, <coughs> and the ox scaler will make it you know, finer, sharper. And in the process of doing so, maybe we'll add something, but it's not going to change your image. If you do it in latent space, you are going to add new image. So likely, if you add too much the noise, it will be completely different your image. So I love this one. And let me go back to this slide. And here you have your marketplace, okay? You have Civic AI, okay? But also you have this marketplace where you have all these scalar model so here just freak out and choose one no there is a lot to choose so according to your needs you will get one uh one warning that i want to give you regarding this website okay the website can kind of i can say that it's safe but be careful from where you are downloading not this <clears throat> this model some sometimes there are some strange links so probably it's not very safe but look at from where you are downloading but generally speaking no it's safe uh, you can go also to Civic AI and Civic AI, you can find some models, but you don't have as many models as, as you can find here. Okay, so go to your marketplace, find your models. There are many of them. You're going to see when I work, I have many, but I'm just testing. You probably you don't need all of them. So that being said, let's move now from here. Okay, so we obtain our fantastic re results. By the way, look at that. I multiply by four my resolution also the file become la became larger so that is some cost that you pay when you do up scaling and now let's talk about two step up scaling which is doing the previous up scaling AI and then adding some latent space up scaling and I like to call it two step up scaling but also you will find it that <coughs> <coughs> that here in, in this interface is called high res fix okay so this is basically what you're you are doing. And you can imagine that you can do also latent space of scaling without this. There is no problem. You can do it and actually we're going, I'm going to show you because that one also can be really good. So what we have here, same image, okay. AI of scaling, this is the time that it took to scale. Okay, so you have also memory requirements and so on, but usually it tends to be fast. Okay, so the, of this <coughs> AI scale of scaler are libraries that can go as high as 16X. So it's very impressive. And then here we have the two-step upscaling. So this one took four minutes 
and look at that and use a denoise factor of 0.7. Recall that denoise is that the imagination, the creativity when you are generating this image. So this is this goes from zero to one. Zero will be equal to the starting image. That would be pretty much this one. And 0 0.7 is very high, so it's going to add a lot of new information. So probably here you don't see the differences, but let me go, let me click here, and there you go. So here we have original image and the previous upscaling, all the <clears throat> AI upscaling. So fantastic, but let me put here the two-step upscaler or the high-res fix. So I put it there, and clearly you can see that this maybe it seems to be a better image i have more details as you can see and this is the fun, the fantastic part of scaling and probably you have seen some some tools on the web that give you amazing results and basically what they are doing is this one they are you going to latent space and adding details and remember that latent space is based on your model models are incredibly important when it comes to upscaling so you need to choose good models so that is something that i'm working a lot on models and just to show you that i have many models and i'm testing that now and merging models so look at it. when it comes to sdxl i have all these models and basically i have all of them because i'm doing a lot of tests for upscaling and trying to merge models to get the best result because that is your secret sauce <coughs> many more libraries so 50 percent will be your model the other 50 percent will be some specific options like using control net or parameters here the number of steps or the or the sampler and no need to say that the hardware have a strong influence so the better the hardware the more you can do okay so <coughs> let me go back here and this is what we have so since a fantastic result and look at here at this at this patch so original patch, and when we add the latent space, look at that, we're adding more information and things are more clear. So I can zoom here, original, okay? You can identify anything here and look at it now, become clear. So it makes no sense, but now you have letters also to here that whatever is that that you have there, look at that, those fantastic details. Look at the texture also, it changed a lot, okay? So this is what we're doing, like scaling latent space. It is changing. <coughs> your composition but it's up to you you can control that and i really like this sign here look at original and then the upscaler fantastic you are adding all those details and in theory you can keep increasing that and i was talking about forge memory management i have been able to go to up to 16x for upscaling in this computer with ajax it takes forever by the way it took me like two three hours what i managed to do it previously using automatic 11.11 on .11 Confi UI, very fast, you know, reaching 2x in latent space, use it always without tiling. Later we talk about the <coughs> tiling, but use it very fast out of, out of memory. Here, no problem. I have been able to do crazy stuff. And what is important talking about now that this is scaling at a lot of fantasy. So look at that, what we have here. Kind of is adding a wall there. So this is the stuff that you would find in upscaling that is really difficult to control. And this is the model and some advanced options. And I want to show you here, look at the ear. So this is fantastic result in the ear here. But look at when we look at the high res <coughs> fix, look at that is adding there an R. So completely something that shouldn't be there and you notice that from far, but then when you zoom, zoom in, you get it there. So these are the small artifacts that you get in a scaling you need to control and just wanted to show you this. Now this was in purpose and this is, and using too much, uh, let's say denoising, but also not controlling that. But it's, that can be controlled. It is not easy, I have to say, but it can be controlled. <coughs> so, Let's continue here before going to the to the tutorial to show you one case, a very simple case. As you can see, there is a lot to talk here. <coughs> and first, I need to talk about models and resolution because that is very important. So we're here. I hope <coughs> you get an idea of what can be done. And to end here, I'm talking about tiling now because this is very important. So imagine that you get an image with these dimensions and we know that all these models, when you are doing upscaling, they are governed by the resolution. So if your model works with a resolution of 20, of, <coughs> <coughs> of 
of 10, 24, if you are going to do upscaling larger than that dimension, likely you are going to get problems. It might work, okay, depending on the denoise level. So if you are not doing too much denoise, it would work for large images, but when you start to add more, you're going to get problems like in the R that we get there. So the idea to avoid that is to do tiling. This is done automatically, by the way, in Forge. In other interfaces, you will need to enable this, but it's, this is something also I like about Forge. It's done automatically. So basically what it's doing is dividing the image in this case and showing not just four <coughs> divisions, but it can be done, done. So each of these images is smaller than the maximum resolution of the model. And basically now you add the denoising, you have an overlap between the images so you can get the same composition that is very important getting overlap. But sometimes it, you might see here a scene between the images it, that can, it can happen when you have a small tiles. Okay. So it's a lot to cover there, but this is the basic, the basic concept It's done automatically. We're going to see what is happening there, but this is how you manage to do very large images in memory, you know, with eight gigs, you know, of memory with low memory, tiling everything. You can put it in memory, as I say, in latent space for larger sizes, but you need memory. Be careful about that. And also try to keep your denoise level low because you put it, let's say more than 0 0.4, you're going to get extreme results. No, those results that you know that the model it's not working, you no, know, like repeated eyes, two eyes, four eyes, uh, four ears, and whatever. You start to see those artifacts that I think I would show you one example. So, this is the introduction, okay? I hope you have a good idea what we're going to do. It is fantastic, the upscaling, probably you have seen in the description. I will put some links to some other libraries that you have in the cloud, probably, you know, Magnifid, uh, there are some others, okay? So, this is what we're going to try, get similar results, okay? So now let's move to the working case. Okay, so let's work in the, in the basic tutorial. So this is our first tutorial, as you see, there is a lot to cover. So this was our image for the benchmarking case. And now we're going to do another case. It's a short repeat case, by the way, I already prepared the case, everything is working, but the steps is similar for any any other case as i mentioned models are extremely important in this case i'm going to stick with the jogger now and using version 9 by the way is the latest one and to mention that okay i'm going to work with this resolution also mentioned resolution is very important so you can choose what i'm doing is choosing this one and then getting the widescreen aspect ratio by the way i recommend you to get dimensions that are divisible by eight there is some standard practice but this case doesn't doesn't matter doesn't make that big influence but it is recommended so we're going to focus on upscaling and many things are going to happen when i mentioned that there is something called tiling and so on that if you go into settings and see that there is a tab here for upscaling, there's a lot of stuff here in upscaling. No, so these are is you see that the model, for instance, in this case, this applies for AI upscaling. Start to do some tiling. It's doing using this parameter. So everything has been predefined, but you can <coughs> you can change everything here. So have that in mind. Uh, then also regarding the models that you can download for here from here or civil AI or whatever, those models are located. Uh, if you go into your installation folder in Forge, I'm going to in Forge <coughs> with UI models, you are going to find these directories, DAT, Codeformers, ESR, GAN, whatever standard force I don't recall, but you can look for that one, this one. <coughs> this one, this one, this one, those are uh, upscaler models. Okay. So the first time, sometimes the first time you use it, it will download. So it will take a little bit long. So look at that. This model is particular, a big one. I don't, I don't recommend to use this one, by the way. Uh, so my advice is to put all the models here, even if, if they don't belong to this category, because there are a category, put it then, then there. So when you run, you will see that the, the terminal window will give you a warning that, okay, that should be somewhere else. Like for instance, I know that this model is a hat H80 model. You have D80 models and so on. So it should be somewhere else, but it doesn't matter. Centralize everything there. So <coughs> for that scaling, you have different, you know, let's say uh, methods or 
they call it here architecture and look at that you have all these different methods so it's up to you to pick up one so they are different also they can do different tasks and so on so as i mentioned here you will freak out because you have many options for you, you know you need to pick up the one that is closest to what you want to do okay generally speaking i think the best models are are this category but it's up to you do your your research and want to go <clears throat> into details also regarding this interface in forge there is a lot to talk about that will be part of the model video because here you have all these auctions these auctions you don't have it here in automatic 11 11 and these auctions will improve your results well likely sometimes probably you don't control well the auctions you are not going to get very good results but i don't want to talk about that but if you are a beginner user or probably i have to say honestly most of the time don't use these auctions okay then for very specific <clears throat> task I start to enable I have to say that many of these auctions I didn't know that, that they exist so of there I, I knew that they exist and I was using those auctions you know, in, in in automatic 1111 and I have to say that focus there are a few of these auctions that I didn't know that it, they exist because <clears throat> I realized that focus are using those auctions you now so some of the magic that is happening in focus is because some of these auctions that you have here and actually you know the author the developer of this interface is the same developer of the focus so it's putting saying of those that <clears throat> that magic here you know that secret ingredient so that being said let's go and work out in in our image okay so i will go here png and look at that this will be our image we're keeping here our blue wolf so if you didn't know this one you have here png you can all the images that you save in automatic 11 11 force and even config ui you have this metadata okay so i will move that metadata to the text to image i will generate my starting image so what we're doing is starting image look at that here you have this high res fix in text to image okay if you want you can do as i show in this slides that is step no we have it here no that it is ai ox scaling plus latent space so here you choose this let me show you it will ask you what method do you want to use so see here that you have the ai or you, if you want to stay in latent space you put it there latent or you have none okay <coughs> okay it's up to you I don't recommend you to do it here because you don't have much control. So it's better to do it image to image. And just to stress this one, that ox scaling kind of is in latent space is image to image. You start from an image, you give some denoise. If the denoise is low, it will keep close to the image. High denoise, it will be different from the image. So that is ox scaling in latent space. And then you can add that AI of scaling and mix everything. So let's generate the image. Okay, we have all the default options there. Everything seems to, to be okay. By the way, the timing that you're going to see here will be slightly different from these slides. And probably scenes are going to be a little bit slow because I'm recording and the recorder is using also the GPU. So I haven't been able to decouple that from you know, the, this generation. Even if I'm using for the recording, the Intel card that I have from the video card, it still is kind of interacting. So since tends to be a little bit slow in, in recording. So be aware <coughs> of that. So let's wait for, for the image. And as I mentioned, always pay attention to the messages that you get here. And also, well, if you want to monitor the memory and so on. So there is that so this is our image okay it's a fantastic very cool image okay and at this point you might be happy with this one but you see that you can increase as i show you in the slides that <coughs> and actually not even i have it here is that you can increase the resolution now so original <coughs> probably this original same case that we have now and then when you add the ox scaler you can go to something like this so let's do that, that and show you the steps. So we have our image. Okay, let me put it here. And what we want to do, the first step, let's say the pure AI ox scaler. That one is, let's say, hidden here in extras. So if you want to do only that one, <coughs> what you can do is that you have the image, okay, now I already have it here. You put it here in extra tab, and look at that here. You have the resize, you choose the value, so you have many values. Be careful, no, 
to go to 16, you need to use a model that have this upscaling. So remember when you choose models, you have different resolutions. So I'm going to go for four, upscaling four, because a model that have a is compatible for upscaling of four. So it's up to you. Here you choose. And I would should, I really like this one. So as I mentioned, I put many models and testing scenes and also on training some different models. Wasting time. It's not that you need it, okay? Because what whatever you find in the internet is working very well. But just testing, playing around, how to do stuff. <coughs> what is cool about this? Also, you can link with another model if you want, and you have many options there. I'm not going to detail this. This is so good, different videos. And now as you click there. It is going to do that upscan. So look at that. It's doing some stuff, okay? Like tiling and moving to memory. And remember those options. Everything is done or using the options there in, in settings, you, you have the option. So everything happened there and there you go. At this point, we should have the image. Yes. 22 seconds. Okay. And let me go save image and let me put it here. Okay, we have the two images. Let me go this stuck. Okay, that is an old image. So yeah, this is the new one. And to show you the original one. Okay, put it here, put it here. And as you soon, you clearly can see the detail of this upscaling. The thing that I don't like this one is that you you can see that it's a little bit artificial. Look at that, some details, but if you look for from far, it's fantastic, okay? I increased my resolution five by four. Fantastic details that you can see much better. The brightness, no, everything is much, much better, okay? But now what you can do is taking this image, you go to latent space, and in latent space, but you're going to do is add more details or namely, instead of adding more detail, kind of diffusing this because you see the edge there is kind of looks like artificial. So it's going to diffuse better with the background and it will do a better composition. Okay. So for that, you keep a low denoising is you put a very high denoising It's going to add a lot of fantasy, but overall, I'm already happy with this one. It's a fantastic image. It's a fantastic improvement from this. So look at the leaf there. Okay. So this is the first of scaling. Okay. I really like this one. And most of the time I stayed, I, I stay at this level for me, that level <coughs> is more than fine, but then let's do, okay. The two state or the high res fix. Okay. So let me go here, put it here. And this is what we have a starting image. It's very important. I recommend you to put the prompt. Okay. So the prompt is going to guide also the image. If you didn't know here, you have these options. Know that it can direct interrogate this image. This is super cool. And sometimes when you see those applications on the cloud that you just put the image and the application doesn't ask you <coughs> for a, for a prompt is that they have this kind of interrogator. So let me click there. Sometimes it can be long, long, can take a long time. Sometimes it can be fast. I want to remind you that in PNG already here, I have my prompt. Okay. So, but to show you there, how this works. <coughs> and voila, there you go. So this is what we have. So a wolf is standing on a rock in front of a waterfall in the woods with fall foliage and a waterfall in the background. Casper Wolf, I guess that is the artist, that is the style, majestic detail rendering for re for re art. <coughs> I have to say that this is a very, very accurate description. You can use this one, okay, if you don't have anything. I know that I already have my prong here. I will use the original prong that I have it here, okay? put it there. But in some cases, if you don't know, you can put it or you can be creative and type that. So I have my prone there. Okay. Put it there and now get the dimensions of the image. Okay. This is very important. <clears throat> we have the dimensions and what we want to do is the noise. This is the fantasy as I mentioned. Okay. So large values, very different composition, exactly the same. 
So my advice is stay below 0.4 to avoid problems. This is very easy to control. You don't need to use any specific tricks. So usually use 0.3. If you start to go here, these are tricks. These are more advanced options that we, we will visit <clears throat> later. So let me do something. Let me put here 0.8, very large. And let's do a resize. I will stay, by the way, in latent space. Okay, I'm not doing the AI or scaling just to show you also the latent. So I will scale by one. Or let's say, let me scale by a little bit, 1.5. So look at that, you put 1.5 to get more resolution to see what details I'm going to add. Important, look at the number of steps. This is not going to do, this number of steps is going to do this times 0 0.8. So it's going to do about 16 or 17 steps. If you put this, in 0 0.3 or 0 0.2, it will do those four or five steps. I don't recall. I think it's, yeah, 0.2 plus one, five steps. And sometimes that is not enough. So my advice when it comes to this, remember, this is image to image. So I think doing at least 10 steps, it is enough. You need to do more than that, so be careful about that. So if you are using a, a low value of the noisy, increase this one to have something about 10 steps. If you have a large ba value of the noisy, you're going to do more steps, so it will be up to you. So usually probably it's also desirable to do more steps. So let me put there 30. So 30 will do 25. Let's see if my math is correct. And well, this one also CFG scale, I will leave it like that. So let me click generate. And if I go here, <clears throat> it's doing all the magic, the memory, and look at that. Actually see, as I mentioned, 25 steps. So to stress something, I'm doing pure latent space. So everything is in memory. So if you don't have memory, it will go out of memory very fast. But as I say, in force now, everything is controlled. So in theory, you can do super large images here. Okay. <coughs> I have done it and it works flawless. Doing this exactly same stuff in the automatic 11, 11 or config UI, it will get out of memory immediately. Already, well, 1.5, it will work, but if you go to two, out of memory immediately. So here, I'm adding new information. I'm increasing my, the dimension of the image. And as I mentioned that if this denoise, denoise is not too high for this image, for this resolution, because I know that my model, the XL, works in kind of in 1024 and different aspect ratios, it's not going to give those strange results that repeated legs and repeated eyes and so on. Okay, so you have to be very careful about that. And I know in this case, maybe I'm going to get those strange results, likely, or I hope I will get, get that so I can show you. And this is a little bit, as you can see, a little bit time consuming. Now it's doing all this stuff in latent space. And there you go, we have it. So let's see. First, you start to see, as I mentioned, you see the repeated, repeated stuff. <coughs> Let me save this image and it's here in desktop. So basically, you have repeated legs. Well, repeated, no, many, many legs. It didn't add eyes, okay? But if you compare with the original, you will see that there are more details, better. Okay, this is not, this is not very nice. Kind of probably is wet there. The, if we look at that change, the, <coughs> the leaf there. So let me open the original image and just to compare the overall composition. So here it changed, okay? So a lot of the noise. Here also the waterfall, completely different, okay? So these are the issues that you have to be careful. This stuff can be controlled, as I mentioned. This is the tricky part. But look at that now, we go from 0 0.8, let me go to 0 0.3. So 0 0.3, it will remain very close to this, but now we're not going to, to, to see those artifacts. Are you still going to resize by this? <coughs> Remember, I'm doing everything now in, in latent space, if you want to do it in, in in latent space, but using the image for AI, AI of scale, you can put that image here, or later I'm going to show you the other option. So 0 0.3 times this one is going to do 10, uh, 10 steps. I'm happy with this. And let's generate. Look at the time that it took here, 1 minute 29 seconds. Obviously, it was doing a 25 steps. This one likely will be faster because it will do, as I mentioned, 10 steps. 
<coughs> and let's wait for this outcome. And here we have our memory usage. Okay, so here we have the result. I suspect it took less time, but it still was time consuming. Remember, this was purely late in space, so it tends to be time consuming. <coughs> and now let me save the image. So immediately you can see that you don't have the repeated legs or the extra legs. And here, let me go with this one, which was the one with 0 0.8 and 0 0.3. And look at the differences. Okay, so no repeated legs, the details is, tends to be very, very close to the original image. So you can see the difference. And let me open the original image. There you go, the original. Okay, so if we put it from far, bam, 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 there will be some details, but usually 0 0.3 doesn't add much details in background. It will add details here. Now, what do you have in the front piece of your composition? And let me zoom in and we can see the details okay kind of better resolution here and so on the eyes kind of is changing eyes there a little bit okay but there you go this is what we have so so far so cool and this is what we're doing okay so this is upscaling pure latent space it's basically image to image now let's do the next step which is using the the <clears throat> the image you now with the ai so probably this i think it, this is the one where i put the that ai so you can generate that one in extra then move it back to image to image and do it but it can be a little bit too many steps in both so to do that it can be done also automatically here and if you go here to the bottom you have a scripts and you will have this uh sd ox scale and then also you have Ultimate SD scale. This is the one I recommend. You need to in install this. This is an extension. So you go into extension, you, you find that one, <coughs> that one. But I'm going to use this one. This is one, okay? It's already installed. So look at that. What the options that you have here it will ask you a scale factor. So this one it will give you a maximum of four. Ultimate, I think you can go up to 16. So here I will do two. Then this is the tile overlap. So recall that you can. It's going to tile your image to put everything. Now this is the tiling. This is to solve that problem when you have large image when you start to increase the resolution. So it's tell you how to overlap that one. So your fault values is okay. Some people like 32. I would use. I, actually, I like to use 32, but leave it 64 is okay. And here you can choose the upscale. If you put none, it will be exactly as we were doing previously. Pure latent space. But now I want to use this one. So the ultra sharp 4x means that is the maximum. So still I can do something lower. Okay, so choose that one or whatever you want. You have many there. So I, in my case, I have many. I would put two. So basically what is going to, to happen is first, upscale using this method. AI upscale. And second, late, late in space. Late in space is going to be tile and using this denoise value. So I mentioned that I will keep it low. My advice to avoid problem because to control that, it is really tricky. Those are tricks that later we, we are going to revisit. I will keep it 0 0.4 probably is the maximum value that, that you can use without adding any strange <coughs> artifact in the, your composition. Okay, so I put it there. SD scale also is very important. It's going to scale by a factor of two. But what is going to upscale this? So this is very important. You need to put here this dimension of the image. Okay, so my my image ha has these dimensions. Or scale or scale that by a factor of two. If you put something different here, okay, <clears throat> we'll get it. And naturally, it's not. This will be the size. It will upscale this one by two, and also will use this one for the tiling. No, it's a little bit tricky. So let me show you the ultimate X SD scale is easier to use. Okay, I'm not going to talk about this one because this one already is going to ask you the tile width there. But I will stick to this one and let's run. Okay, we have set up everything. I'm doing 0.412. Okay, and generate. And let's see what happens. So see that is 
tile of scale so it's taking the, the image it's doing all the of scaling the parameters that is using there recording the settings you have some so that so this is the ai of scaling working and now it's moving to the latent space of scaling okay so look at that here you see that the scaling is will do the tile process three by three okay so it's dividing the image three by three and here sometimes you can see this one now that it, you will see the tiles so now each tile okay will have a smaller dimen dimension you are sure that your model is not going to get out of bound of the dimension that it will work and likely will reduce you no know, <coughs> the appearance of those artifact double stuff now you keep everything you no know, you are obeying the rules of the model okay and that is very important i already mentioned models here are extremely important so remember if you are using xl usually 1024 if you are using 1.5 512 as i mentioned 1.5 you they're still very alive they work very well personally speaking for everything cartoonish they are fantastic and for scaling these models from sd 1.5 are much better than the xl i found that controlling of scaling xl using xl model with a lot of fantasy here or the noise is very tricky instead as you use the uh, 1.5 is way much easier okay so let's wait for the final image and let's see what we got okay we're back we have an image took about three minutes so not bad this is by looking there i don't see any strange detail everything seems fantastic and uh, let me save this image 633 let me go here will be this one so this is the one we just upscale and actually you could remember always in properties is you're in windows there you go this is our upscaling and let me get the uh blah, blah, blah. this was the previous one the one with the ai or latent so look at that clearly you can see the difference that is much better so this combination of these two steps tends to give better results not necessarily no you can start to combine then you from this one then you can move to a pure latent space that i found that it can give me better results to add let's say more photorealism talking about photorealism but this this this, uh, this is a lot about models but this is a fantastic result okay so from this one that look at that here you start to see that nicely here better details and you can keep upscaling okay and in 4x you can go to 8 16 18 whatever you want no? and i'm not going to go all those steps because that is time consuming as i mentioned it takes a long time but I, hopefully you get an idea how it works so just to stress something how this works for the sd ox scale okay so the tiling is done in function as this value so this value you should get my advice the same dimension of the image and then multiply by this one so it will multiply by this and then it will do the tiling so in this case it will put three uh tiles because also it's adding this overlap so adding the overlap so if you do the image you will get something you will see that it will fit three there but depending of what you put here can be different dim dimension so you can put a smaller value here so kind of downscale and you will see that it will put more tiles and so on. but my advice leave it like this okay the same dimension so be careful about that that put in the dimension here otherwise it's not going to be a good of scaling then the other and let's say that after installing ultimate and just to mention you go to extensions available location and here you just just look for ultimate and it will install now in my case it doesn't show because it's already installed but you install that one and let's do this step because this one is much easier to use honestly okay so the ultimate it is the same idea take your image okay here doesn't matter this dimension it's not like sd the noise is important okay put it there but here you do the same now you go ultimate choose this now 
here you have settings no so i will scale from image size so look at that here it's taking the image size and look at that can go up to 16 that's a lot so let me go here a four let me put four here the maximum of this one so you're going to do first this one then four and look at that you have these options and these options are very important this is a mention to control when you're adding too much fantasy this will help a lot besides also control net control net also you can avoid you know adding strange results and so on so just to mention fast here but you can change this is the tile width so here now you can do it manually Okay, you say here so the larger the better obviously so and obviously do not go outside the bounds of the model so if you put this one that not that is not a good result i have to say that there are new models that probably i'm going to reach this one i think i think stable cascade can do that also but i have seen models that get very very close as the xl to that so usually uh depending no but in this case 768 is okay this put zero it will use a square tiles or you can put a different one so mass blur this is important so this what, what is going this is the padding this is the tile overlap so in this case by default it's 32 but this one is going to take the image and it's going to add some blur so the larger the value more blur is going to add into that image the more fantasy because this image now is blur and it will add different details so this is up to you okay and usually you, you change this one in a combination with the noise. That is my standard practice. Large denoise here, like more than 0 0.5, increase this one, okay? So you can go up to 64, that is very blur image, to eight. And just to show you, probably if you want to see that blur image, let me open a control.net unit that, I, this is another video also, control.net. Actually, <coughs> I think we have a video this, but using automatic 11 11 is pretty much the same. So let me add a blur filter here, okay? And the blur filter, what it's doing basically is this. Let me put it there. See that sigma eight will be not equivalent to that. So if you put 64, it will take that image, it will do that. Now, using this one, you are in latent space and you can imagine that latent space, it will add a lot of crazy details because you have this. Instead, if you put something low, you put it close to zero, it will be pretty much the same image, same details. And if you put eight, like in this case, this is what is going to happen. It's going to take an image like this, so with some blur, and then it's going to add details. Okay, be careful about that. Very important when you have high denoise. In this case, it's not necessarily to have very large value. Eight is cool, it's fine. Then you have some other options if you have scenes and so on, so there's more advanced, but use the default values and let's go and generate. So go back here and let's see what we have. We are going to have a similar, okay, we're in the bottom. Okay, I already separated everything, but somewhere here we're going to have Okay, look at here, that is telling you that your canvas, this dimension, remember, it's by four, and now scale factor four, and it's going to do the tiling four by eight. It's control, as we say, and there you go. The larger the tiles, by the way, the faster it will be, but you are bound by memory. So if you start to go 1024, remember that you need more memory. <coughs> And all this stuff managed automatically. And this is what I say that now in automatic 11.11, uh, it was difficult. You have the problem with memory. It was getting out of memory very fast. Here, as I mentioned, I managed to go to 16 with no problem. And actually, this will take a while. But before that, let me go that I think, yeah, no, this is, this is another example. I think it is this one. Okay, so this is an upscaling. And let me put it here, the properties if eight in this computer with eight gigs okay and let me put the original image here this one and look at the details this is not easy by the way this requires using the right models i have to stress that here i use a stable diffusion 1.5 but amazing look at the details in the eyes here also how it changed you have it here in the original look at the noise the texture <coughs> everything the leaf here and so on so basically this is what all those tools that you find the cloud are doing but they have the secret sauce that i have no doubt first hardware is super important 
models okay it's incredibly important and to get this result i have to say that i test it and that is the reason why i have many models i test many many models and actually i merge models to get these results and um, let me go here in the air so look at these details here and to mention using a standard model okay i know what this result the standard model i think is this one now this is already a realistic one the standard will be, this is the standard okay and you will see clearly a result that is still from far is a nice result but you zoom in and let me zoom it there see the details so this is using a <coughs> a model not optimized for this kind of of image then i changed to a more realistic model by the way you can add lotus in all this stuff and so on and you can get this result already this is a nice image but this is much better okay if you are zooming in if you are from far there is no need because this stuff took me like three hours <coughs> See, I have the timings here. So what I was happening there, I have all these images, and then I have those fine tune for 4x, 8x with the scale, crazy scale, more than two hours, and many combinations and so on. So while this one is waiting, also let me show you because I have some other results of this case that I have it here, and I have the image slider. That that's a really cool website. I love that website. <coughs> I put the image of this case here. Okay. <coughs> so a starting image, and here we have the latent space of scaling. So clearly you can see what is happening. Then we can compare with the AI of scaling. So it's up to you, you know, to choose which one you prefer. So you can use all these combinations. Or here we have SD ox scale. So remember this one will be AI first and then latent space with this denoise value. And clearly you see that this one improved the results. Still here the year. It's not as nice as the one I show you. Let me go back here. Okay, no, actually it's nice. This one is getting nice. I want to point out that this is this specific result is a stable diffusion XL. Very tricky to control. This one here, very fine tuned for X. This is a stable diffusion with a 0.5. I use a realistic model. I don't recall. And fantastic result. So at this point, let's wait for this upscaling that it will take a while hopefully no it's now it's as here 60 percent. so let's wait a little bit let me put here memory consumption and then we can yeah we are almost ready to wrap up this uh, tutorial Okay, we're back. We have an image. It took about seven minutes. So I still that, see that 4x, not that sophisticated stuff, seven minutes. I go to x, 8x. It is more than half an hour. And then the one I did, no, I might know 14x was the maximum I managed to do. That was like three or four hours. And yeah, the fun in my computer was, well, maximum speed very very noisy like for three three hours so this is what we have let me go here let me put it as use of five to seven and you go properties and there you go your right resolution using the sd here and we're using x xd why why okay open to i don't know why and let me zoom in there and look at that there you go start to see your details there much better than your starting point i have to point i really 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 like here how it's resolving you now the leaf here and the water it's crazy so let's see from the original point which was this one our original image we managed and it didn't took that long huh? so from this we managed to get this degree of resolution much better details and to point out that then you have lotus 
for eyes, texture, skin, noise, background, the, the nature on the back, and to show you that. And okay, that I have. Ba, 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 ba. Let me go for automatic 11 11. Bam, 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 bam. Model. So there is a lot of software, secret magic. I have all this. Laura's detailed the tailors and so on to add more details to the image. So later another bit I'm going to show you for a specific for nature and so on. So even though so, some of those results that you see in those fantastic, I have to say that are amazing now, Oxcaler online, it's because they added a lot of in the models. They they took many Loras also and they merged the Loras with the checkpoints <clears throat> to get all that information known to make fanta fantastic images. So yeah, we let's wrap up here. So I hope you, you have now a good idea how things work. It's very straightforward, as you can see. Just need to understand the details. For the moment, keep this here below 0 0.5 or 4. You will see, already saw here, I show you that as you go more than 0.5, you start to see strange results. That can be controlled. <coughs> Specific technique control net is very important. Also here adding the <coughs> blurring the image and so on. So finally, that that will be the next video. I want to show you something now because this is a really cool result as well. That you can go from very crazy results. So this is exactly the same image that we have. Starting point, I use a model and look at the importance of the model. I pixelate it. Okay. So we have the image there, pixelated, and this is what we want to do. From this pixelation, let's see what we can recover. And this is what we have. Okay, so pixelation. So I'm taking the pixelated, and the next video I'm going to show you, so if you don't believe. And then I we do a latent space of scaling. In this case, it's not a good idea to do all the, the ox scaling, AI ox, the two-step of scaling, because this is pixelated, so it's not going to improve anything. So Latent space of scaling, just one X. I didn't, I didn't increase the resolution. I just added a lot of net denoise, and it managed to control to reconstruct this. I did it in purpose. Also, look at that. The denoise is really high, so you have the extra lag there. So, but that can be controlled. The prompt is very important. Okay, so you need a prompt there to give a good prompt to try to recover that. But here we go. Ultimately, of scale to X much better resolution and actually let's put it here that 1x 2x okay and let's go and let me zoom in there and look at how well it resolves those details and then we go to okay oh well this is the original so basically what i did this was the original image this original image i used the model i pixelated so this one is pixelated and then from the pixelation I just added latent space of scaling to reconstruct something. To hide the scaling, you have the extra LED. As I say, that can be controlled. There is no problem. But yeah, this will be addressed that in the next video. So to finish this one, remember models are super important. Uh, SD 1.5 is still very much, I think, is still alive for, as I mentioned here, of scaling. The best results I get it using these models and also for all the cartoonish stuff is very important. Then you have this option here that you can do the two step of scaling. I recommend you to use all the time the ultimate, but the SD also is the same stuff, but harder to control. Um, <clears throat> finally, remember you can do just AI of scaling. Okay, in this case, we, we, we have it here. You can do just pure latent space of scaling. Be careful about that one because it's memory consuming. Okay, as you go out of bound easily, you're going to get errors in some other tools. In Forge, it's going to work with super slow. Or you can do the two steps, okay? AI of scaling plus latent space of scaling. And when doing all this stuff, no, in latent space, try to get this one below 0 0.4. More than that, if you do your test, you will realize that you start to see that fantasy that is tricky to control okay so that's all for this video hope you enjoy uh, enjoy it and see you see you next time bye